what is going on YouTube welcome to the channel today we're gonna talk about how to book loads as a power only operator commonly referred to a as a PO roll the intro I completely forgot I do not have an intro I just started the channel so as a power only operator you have to make sure that you expand your horizon. You have to uh, expand your search criteria. You got to make sure you have other means to look for loads, such as JB Hunt, uh, Coyote Logistics, your TQL. I know some of you are smirking when I said TQL, but believe it or not, it doesn't cost you anything. So let's talk about TQL for a moment, right? I started my authority in May. May of this year, May 2021, uh, the, the end of May to be specific. Now, like most people probably started their authority prematurely. What I mean by that is like either by, uh, by not doing enough research, by not being ready, and by having not enough have, uh, funding. And me, I was the latter. I did, not enough ha I did not have enough funding to start my own authority. So let's go back to TQL. A lot of people, they diss on TQL. They, they're saying that they're cheap and they're this and they're that. Like I said in the beginning, all you can do is ask. All they can say is no. What's good about TQL is that, number one, they take you a day one of your authority. They, they don't have no problem taking you from day one. As long as all the paperwork are clear, everything is good to go. You can haul loads for TQL. Number two, they're big enough that you don't have to worry about not getting paid unless, of course, there's damages, there's a dirty BOL, or something happened to the freight with, uh, within the transport that, that was supposed to be the carrier's responsibility. And number three, they have quick pay. So for someone like me who started my own authority prematurely, funding-wise, that was good for me. So it, in a way, they were a good stepping stone for me. Before we get too far off topic, let's get back into what this video is about. How to find loads as a power only. The main load board that I use is DAT load board. It's what a lot of people use is what a lot of brokers use to post loads. And it's not, it's a, it's an application just like anything else. It's a tool. And for you to use that tool, you need to learn how to utilize that tool to your uh, advantage, to how to use the little quirks that it comes with. And it makes your life so much easier. So here we go. My screen looks like this. It looks like crap, but I put everything together as far as uh, that everything that involves trucking is all in this page, in this last two page, really. I don't know how to do all that quirky stuff that all these kids do when it comes to organizing your apps and whatnot. But anyway, let's pull up the load board. And this is what it looks like uh, when you pull it up. And it's, this load board has everything in it. I mean, it's just so much easier to use. Uh, I've used it on the desktop, on the PC, and I don't like it on the PC side because it's just so much clutter in there. So I like this version better. I like the app, uh, the app version better. So uh, let's let's try to look for a load, right? Let's go new search, and then uh, I'm I'm from the Las Vegas area, so we're gonna go ahead and go Las Vegas, and uh, do the do is where. deadhead okay so how much d dh dash o it means deadhead how much deadhead are you gonna come from uh or origin that's what that means d d h o okay so we'll just go ahead and put the search criteria into 50 and then uh, we're just gonna go anywhere and we're gonna go and we're just gonna go to what majority of the people use which is van standard right uh you have flatbed reefers, Conestoga containers, all that other mumbo jumbo. So uh, if you don't know what those are, I would say 
research them. I mean, I know the majority of them, but this is what the majority of people use is this van standard. So we'll, uh, in the, for now, we're just going to go ahead and look up loads with that criteria. Okay, so uh, this part where it says length, so usually you want to leave that off. I mean, if you are a 53, you just leave that off. And I mean, you can put 53 on there, but why? Uh, when you put uh, something on there, you are limiting your search criteria. So you just you you just want to just leave it blank. And on the weight, let's just go ahead and put 40,000, right? And then full or partial. That's what uh, if you're looking for just a partial or full, which has both of your options. And we're just gonna go ahead and put full we don't want to clutter our search criteria if you put both it shows the partial and the full so in the me uh, for now let's just try to uh limit our search criteria just to make sure that we we don't get a cluttered screen so let's uh select the date what date you want to search that's uh october 28 october 28 so uh, you can also have the end date of the search, which is October 29. Now, if you're looking for today, if you're looking for a load today, I would highly suggest that you just put your search criteria on the 28. Now, the only reason why I put my search criteria the day after is that if it's towards the end of the day, okay, if it's towards the end of the day and I still don't have a load, then I would put it for the next day just to make sure I covered those just in case there was one that's picking up at midnight or whatnot, you know? So, and um, that's how you want to utilize that. That's how, you know, like I said, it's just a tool that this is, this right here, this whole thing is just a tool for you to utilize. Now, how to utilize that is that you just gotta keep using it and learn how to use it to your advantage based on how you want to move freight. So let's go ahead and do that and let's search. And this is what it looks like when you get a search. Now on the top right corner of it is right there. Uh, you can have it, uh, you can have look for book now loads and they will have some that would say book now that that means you have to be connected. You have to have been verified by DAT, which I have done already and also uh, payment and everything. So that's why you have Coyote Logistics and Swift uh, that I know of that does that a lot that have book now. And let's go look at um Let's look at this load, right? Now, 40,000 pounds. Uh, let's see. It's 40,000 pounds. More than likely, it's not going to be 40,000 pounds. Uh, but you can, you always, you always, when you call and you ask for that freight, they'll have reference numbers on them or extensions on them, just like what they have right here, is that you want to make sure you ask for every little detail that you need on that load. So let's say this one is saying 40,000 pounds and you ask for the commodity, what type of commodity it is, is it palletized, uh, what's, what's the length? This one they're showing length 53 and they're showing 40,000 pounds. That's pretty much a standard that they put down just so they can cover their bases basically. So once you found out what the commodity is, a lot of times you know if it's going to be heavy or light. So now that we have a little bit of understanding on how to look up loads on, in, in the most basic way is that uh, we're going to go into what the title of the video is power only, right? How do I move freight? You know, uh, the power only side is so much more. It's a little bit more uh, challenging because of the fact that uh, you got people that have all of these trailers and then they want you to use their trailer uh, as a uh, uh, and they put their freight in there and then they want you to use their trailer to move that freight, right? So basically you're just providing the tractor. Now that's half of the equipment. So that means those freight, uh, technically should be cheaper, right? R uh, rate wise, not necessarily. Like I said, is that you have to know what rate you want to run as, 
And when you establish that rate, which I'm going to make a video of that, when you establish that rate, then you start asking for that rate. And then depending on how bad or how much you want to move or where you want to move, you can make those determination on how far you want to alleviate from that particular rate. So let's go in. Let's go ahead. Oh, by the way, once you uh, make a search, that search will always be there until you delete it. So let's go ahead and delete that. And boom. Let's go ahead and add another one. And let's go look at Las Vegas. I, I mean, it, you can put it on the auto. It, it all automatically collect your current location. So it'll just put it. I don't know why it says the lakes on there. I don't even know where that is. <laughs> but it's in it's within this area right anyway so let's go look for only so how to do power only right uh, uh you're always on the any part and then you click the only this where it gets a little bit more specific right so you have auto carrier b train conestoga container i mean it's all kinds of stuff over here but the only thing that we're concerned about is power only so we go to p where do you go? Where do you go? Am I? Wow. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Power only. <laughs> okay. And then we put that, uh, we say yes. And you can, uh, by the way, you can select more than one there. So if you want to look for power only and as well as, let's say, flatbed, you know, I don't know why would you, but I mean, if you're looking for power only, you should. This, you don't have a trailer, right? Or unless you're a dispatcher, I guess. But let's go power only and press done. Now, we we do the search. Uh, we'll just do it in one day for now, just because of uh, uh, because we're still a little early here. So let's go ahead and look. Now, like I said, power only are gonna be a lot more uh, challenging rate wise because it's power only. You're only providing half of the equipment that it requires to move that freight. So uh, let's look at, let, let's just look at uh, highest rate, right? It's not going to be much coming out of Las Vegas, but we'll show you how to do it. Uh, we'll show you what California looks like. Anyway, so uh, coming out of Las Vegas, you're always going to average around 250 uh, on the power only, you know, and that's okay and at the same time not that great so uh if you're not if you can't go into california i guess because you don't uh, meet emission standards i guess i mean like i said it's just it's all up to you on how you make that call so let's look at uh, colorado springs this i mean look at the average on that right uh look at the average the 30-day average on this uh on this load it's 3081 that's your 30 day average. Don't always believe that, but it's something you can go off by. So if your rate doesn't meet the, uh, the offer, then you look at the 30 day average. A lot, sometimes they don't have offer on there too. And I will show you some of those too, but look at this. That's horrible. That's $2 a mile and they want team, <laughs> you know, we're too far off on that and we're not even going to bother with that. A 30 day average on that, I still don't like that. 30 day average of 3,000 going to uh, Colorado. No, we're not doing that. That's why freight coming out of Vegas is not that great, unless there's convention. So um, let's go look at. I'm not seeing anything here. Oh, here we go. What is this? Warner Enterprise. Okay, so this is a round trip run because it says Las Vegas to Las Vegas. So, uh, oh. So you see, you also got to make sure you always read those comments. OK, that's why you have to ask every little detail that you can. OK, you got to make sure you confirm all of these. Now, uh, look, look what this one says. Round trip runs out of St. George, Utah, not Las Vegas. <laughs> why would you put Las Vegas on there? I guess it's because some people, you know, they use their search criteria. They put it on 50 miles and then they're not going to be able to cover St. George. You know, because St. George is about 100 miles from Las Vegas. So uh, let me see. D uh, daily. OK. OK. And this is a dedicated run. 
I never seen this before. Is this the actual Warner Enterprise? So another thing that I look for on on uh, on the DAT load board is I got to make sure the company and the MC all of those matches. So when you click that company, right, it'll take you to a page which is right here, and the MC number should match that MC on the top with en Enterprise Inc. or Warner Enterprise Inc. I don't know if this is the actual uh, Warner but those should match and you can always call you know and it has all the information on there and one of the things that i look for mainly is right here the credit score if, if their credit score is not consistent which this one is somewhat consistent uh i would stay away from it you know uh the the first number of of that is the credit score the behind the slash is how many days it takes for them to pay if you don't have factoring okay so uh, they they started in April 21. They were at 97 credit score and 19 days to pay. And today, as of current, is 90 day credit score and 20 days to pay, which is OK. That's not bad. That's about average. So and all of these other stuff, all these other information, right, uh, such as your insurance, what kind of insurance they carry, how much they cover, you know, all of those other things. Right. And another uh key note or, or the key thing to pay attention to is the reviews right always always read reviews so let's go look at the reviews let us go right here okay they like to work with unsafe carriers uh, okay okay i don't think i don't think we need to pay attention to those kind of reviews the, the main reviews i'm looking for is that are there pay issues on the reviews are there uh, detention issues? Are there tonal issues where the truck is not used, but they did not pay them? They did not pay the truck. So in other words, you travel to that location that they told you to pick up from and then ended up that the load is no longer available or it won't be available until tomorrow or something to that effect. And then they did not compensate you for that. You know, those are the kind of things I'm looking for uh not professional you know what that's okay we can we we can we can tolerate some of that you know because we are in sales right we're pretty much in sales we are negotiating a uh, rate uh, with this broker therefore you might catch some attitude there that's okay don't 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 get your feelings hurt if they tell you some crazy stuff like you know all you can do is just say no thank you hang up the phone you know why why get in confrontation with them don't don't do that so anyway but this guy is letting us know about that you know and that's two years ago though so there could have been changes within that company within uh past that so i usually look for reviews that are like newer and these newer reviews they don't seem to be i mean they don't seem that bad you know so i think it's okay to go ahead and book loads with this guy now if you have factoring, your factoring company will have green light, red light, yellow light on those on certain brokers. Now, if they have red light on these guys and then you have those reviews, you, it's probably safe not to go ahead and go for that. You know, so. But uh, that's pretty much, you know, the uh, the overview on what, how, where, you know what I mean? Like a, a lot of your basic stuff here. A lot of the stuff that you got to pay attention to is all uh, right there, right in front of you. So let's look at a TQL. So this one is picking up in Boulder City. It's 27 miles away. By the way, that number up there on uh, where it says Boulder City parenthesis 27, that's that means is how many miles you got a deadhead to that. So in this in this particular one is 27 miles to that head. Now, the average on this one is 5,800. Knowing TQL, they're probably going to fight you in trying to get 5,800 on that. Uh, they will definitely book it for 58 because it's going to Florida. And no, nobody in their right of mind should go to Florida for that much. Not at this market. Las Vegas is pretty much boring, right? As far as load wise and all that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crappy okay now let us go and edit that i usually i i don't want my uh, my search 
screen to be cluttered so I usually just try to edit that and just be like okay uh, let's uh, try to central to be in the center and just say Fontana California and we're gonna do that and PO and within a 50 mile radius and actually let's let's extend that to about a hundred mile uh, radius okay because that covers San Diego as well okay let's look at that now let's look at highest rate and this should look a little better now <laughs> don't get not do not the price do not ever ever be like oh man i gotta book that thing really quick because look at that it's seventeen thousand. no click it and look at it pay attention okay it says dedicated lane beginning november 1st through march drop in hook loaded one way empty back to origin so you go there load it and then you come back empty okay and it says team required this u.s mail okay now that we covered that let's go take a look at uh the top part okay uh picks up on the 28 uh pickup dock hours they didn't put it on there because it's first come first serve that's what fcfs means and uh the type of truck is power only 53 length is 40,000 pounds more than likely because it's U.S. mail. It's not going to be 40,000 pounds. So, and you got all your contact information. Now, the key thing to pay attention to this, right? You're talking about uh, that much amount of money. That's probably not the right amount of money, but they put that figure on there just to attract people, right? So, uh, I would say that's... The, the key thing to pay attention to is that these guys don't have a credit score. They don't have the days to pay. I mean, they're probably legit. They could be new or whatnot. And then, so we click them, right? We click them and then we look at, uh, let's see. Uh, broker. And yeah, they, they are very, very, very new. They got a five-star review because they probably review their own selves. Okay, so they don't have, yeah, they, they, they're, they're very, very new. And, oh, that's not mine. What the heck? So we're probably not going to mess with those, but that's just an example of what, uh, what to look for, you know, the details. You got to make sure you know the details. You got to make sure you verify those details. So now that we briefly touch on that, so let's go back and look at this, uh, the way we are sorting this search. Uh, we're sorting it at the highest rate, and let's look at for, let's look at something that is more uh, reasonable as far as rate wise. Okay, coming out of California as power only, you're probably gonna be around three plus dollars rate, you know, on average. So uh let's look at oh by the way like you see how it's grayed out this one is grayed out uh it's gonna get like that once you click on something so you click that and you come back it's grayed out too so let's uh let's look at something more reasonable okay so let's look at this one all right and this one is going from Poway, California. It's 92 miles from the your search criteria. This one, they, their credit score is not that great. It's 85, 85 credit score, 20 days to pay. Let's, uh, let's see what people are talking about. Oh, you see, ah, oh, prime example. Good thing we found something like this. Look at that. April 21, it says, I mean, look at that. That's, they have not improved. Well, they have improved on their days to pay and that's horrible that's horrible uh record right now we don't we probably don't want to mess with that and that's probably one of the reason why they're offering that at six thousand which is a little bit over three dollars to the mile at 1822 miles so uh and when the average from on that lane particular lane is 5466 the average the average i use average to uh get a guesstimate on what the market is doing. I don't use that to say like, okay, that's what I want to book. No, yeah, I, I use that to gauge what the market is doing. Okay. So let's say at 
5466. I'm going to make an offer on that. Like, let's say it doesn't have an offer on there. Okay. I would probably make an offer on that at like 68. You know, I would go 68 on that. Now, you would know right away on how far off you are or how much more they got they can go with. Once you tell them 68, they're, they're, if they don't have that much on this uh, freight, they're probably going to tell you you're crazy. So, you know, that's, <laughs> I mean, like I said, is that all you can do is ask, all they can say is no or yes, you know. So, but uh, on this particular one, we'll probably want to stay away from something like that. Okay, let's look at uh, Landstar Ranger Inc. Ooh, wow. what is this? There's got to be, there we go. And there it is. It says round trip, power only, ready, hazmat, need hazmat too. So, um, their, their review is not that great. And, you know, Landstar, Landstar do a lot of double brokering. So, you I try to stay away from Landstar as much as I could. Unless, of course, it's a really, really good rate, which that one is actually not bad, but it requires a hazmat, and I don't have that. So, I mean, I, you, I don't really don't need it. I don't want the headache. Uh, let's see. And then we got Omega Freight Solutions. That's about $5 to the mile, a little bit over. So that's... And at the same time, credit score. So that's another thing that you want to, uh, I mean, it's up to you. You know, you can take the risk or not. It's up to you. Once once you uh, figure out like, hey, you know what? It might be worth, you know, uh, taking a gamble on these guys, you know, or whatnot. And you read their reviews and you feel like that, you know, it's not enough to justify that they have bad reviews or you look at their credit rating and their days to pay, you know, you're, you're okay with it. Hey. That's up to you, you know. That's your fuel. That's your equipment. <laughs> that's not mine. So, if you feel like you know taking the risk, take the risk. You know. Okay. So let's go look at the Swift one. Swift usually would be like uh, from origin to delivery back to origin. That's how Swift power only the majority of them. So uh, when you see the miles. Usually, you want to try to double that. In this particular case, they have it at San Bernardino to San Bernardino, but sometimes they will have it to wherever it's going. So Pueblo, Colorado, and then back. So Pueblo, Colorado is like 1,000 miles from San Bernardino, and that's 2,000 miles at 5,500. Nah, we don't want we don't, I mean, I guess that's okay. You know, it's doable. Maybe, maybe you can work that up to... You know, 6,000. If you can work that up to 6,000, that's actually not a bad load because you come back to your point of origin at 6,000 and that's $3 to the mile on average. So that's okay. I, I don't see nothing wrong with that, really. Um, Let's see. We go and uh, let's see. There's uh, one of the most important thing in looking for loads is as a power only you want to check out the van side so let's look at let's add new search let's look at fontana california and then let's look at the van side go back to the we'll go back from uh, only to van standard and then boom the reason why i didn't put it on the only part too because it cluttered the screen that's why i don't like that you know, so let's just go ahead and do the same search and the same criteria, the same. And let's look it up. There we go. On the van side. Now, I would look at the highest rate. Let's look at the highest rate. And highest rate. Oh, okay. Looking much better, right? Looking much better. Let's see. Uh, and the, uh, we offer quick pay at stops. It, so this one stops in Indiana, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So it's got one, two, three, four stops. Four stops. It looks like just one pick, four stops. Okay. Uh, it has all that other information on there. But anyway, so this one at 27, uh, 27.50, say, give or take. So at 10,000. That's actually, that's not bad. That's not bad rate, but at the same time, you still have those four pickups or four drop-offs. So I would say, I would say try to try try to work that up. See, on something like that, well, 
what I have learned is that you can you have negotiation uh, room. You have a lot of negotiation room when it comes to having two different pickups or four different drops and whatnot. And look at that. It's at 89. Uh, 30 day average is 8,900 to go to Pennsylvania from Los Angeles and they're offering it at 10, nine. So I'd, I'd say they have a little bit more room in there, you know, and you can negotiate that up. You know, maybe I will record a conversation one day on negotiating those rates, you know, but in the meantime, this is what that looks like. And these guys right here, they're not bad. Uh, they, they're, they're pretty trustworthy and I don't think you'll have any issues with these. Like I said, you will, the more you use this uh this app you'll the more you learn and the more you start you know uh it's becoming instinct on who to trust on what to look for and things like that so you just gotta keep using it you know and uh so the reason why i went into the van side because they have these things they call power only okay i mean not power only but loadout trailer now loadout trailers are trailers that needs to be moved from one location to the next and they're empty they're registered well a lot of times they're registered trailers or they have temp tags okay and a lot of times they're sold that trailer was sold uh to somebody and then they're moving that trailer and for them to move it at a discounted rate is that they're they agreed on loading that trailer okay on on its way to their destination to their final destination that's what it's called load out trailer okay now uh let's go back into the power only since we saw the van side the van side doesn't look that bad okay so let's go back to the power only and let us look for a loadout trailer loadout trailers the reason uh how to find loadout trailers is they're easy to spot okay so let's see uh, let's look at this guy and it says it says load out right there right there but it's a you gotta you gotta pay attention though it's a reefer and it's a roll-up door so and it's also a 48 and it also says seven to ten day loadout that means you can keep that trailer seven to ten days before you it has to be at the destination where they have it listed which is uh haverhill massachusetts right so uh that's how you figure out how you want to uh move that trailer and when you think about that now that loadout trailer you have now you have a trailer now you have the full load okay you don't just have half of the equipment now you have both equipment or the full equipment so now you can go to the van side and pick start picking up those good rated loads okay some of the things that you have to watch out for on the loadout trailer number one stay away from brand new loadout trailers you must absolutely have to try to stay away from brand new ones because when they get scrubbed off inside, they get damaged inside or anything that is evidently, uh, uh, you know, that it was used. You pay for it. You cover that. I mean, you got insurance, right? But why? Why would you want to try to cover that with your insurance? And uh, when... When you're using a used one, when you pick up a used one, it actually gives you that the uh, the freedom to go ahead and just load just about anything you can. I mean, you don't want to damage the trailer to where it's freaking, you know what I mean? It's like it's fresh damage or got cut or whatever, right? That you're still responsible for that. But the scuffs, the marks, the used marks, you know, all of that, you want to try to get book a used loadout trailer and also also another thing to watch out for make sure they're swing doors don't don't try to make it difficult on yourself that it's a roll-up door because roll-up doors have lower clearance so you want to make sure you look for something that is swing door or you get a roll-up door and then you got to look for uh, the the load that you got to look for you got to make sure you verify that you can clear okay the forklift can clear or the load can clear i mean so but uh we'll I'll make another video on specifics on the loadout trailer, but that's pretty much it. You know, that's how uh, there goes another loadout trailer by TQL and it's uh, it's a reefer. And uh, this one does not have as much details, but you just got to call it in and ask. Uh, let's see. 
loadout trailers. So that's how you look for loadout trailers, basically, is that you'll see them, you'll see on the power only side, you'll see them with uh, a lot of times they don't have no offer on them. And then you just click it and it'll show it on there. You know, and this one is 53 foot uh, van trailer and it's brand spanking new. Okay. That's already, that's already, that should be a light bulb, uh, uh, what you gonna call it, lighten up. Make sure if you have the choice, do not pick up a brand new loadout trailer. I have seen people that get fine, ridiculous amount. So it's pointless, you know, and you got, you got all that extra money to haul uh, a van side instead of power only, and then you got to pay money for damages then <laughs> what's the point you know so you just you, you you're walking you're working backwards so but that's pretty much it man you know that's uh that's your loadout trailers that's your power only you know i can get into uh make more videos specific on how to uh pick up those uh how to be more proactive in loading your uh, uh as a power only so that's basically it, you know, I mean, that's not, that's just the most, that's the most very basic way. I'm sure I showed you the most very basic way. It gets so much more complicated and, uh, I'm going to make some more videos in the future just to show how much more it gets complicated, you know, but that's the basic part of it. Uh, to maximize your earning as a power only is the best way is to find loadout trailers. However, a lot of times you deadhead much more when you have to pick up a loadout trailer and then you got to pick up the next load so your your deadhead you got to try to figure that out that's up to you on how to figure out if you are profitable on that part of it on that aspect of it but also knowing knowing where you position yourself in the country on which part of the country you position yourself freight wise but that takes experience and that's how you minimize and that's how you become more profitable in picking up loadout trailers compared to power only. So, but other than that, that's it. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and let me know down below. Uh, leave a comment down below and make sure, make sure you subscribe. Let me know. Uh, um, there's going to be more content coming up. We're going to produce a lot of content on this channel uh, about mainly about how a power only operator works but it's not just that but mainly on the owner operator side give it a like and we'll see y'all next time